Madam Vice President, thanks for joining me on Upfront. Uh, when Egyptians rose up against Mubarak, Iran supported them. When Libyans rose up against Gaddafi, Iran supported them. When the Bahrainis took to the streets against their royal family, uh, Iran supported them. But in Syria, when the people rose up there, you helped President Assad kill them. Why? Why can't Syrian revolutionaries get the same support from Iran that Egyptians, Libyans and Bahrainis have? I think that in all these cases, ultimately, the people have to decide. About Syria, no group, no country has the right to decide for the people of Syria. It's ultimately the people who decide for their future, and I think that it should be that way for the people of Syria. Unfortunately, we have terrorist groups. We have certain foreign powers arming terrorist groups inside that country, and that has been aggravating the situation in the past years and this is something that has to be addressed uh, of course um, i think the international community is now more and more realizing uh, the situation and uh, i think that the people of syria should be supported in terms of their struggle against terrorism and that ultimately a internal dialogue should gain momentum and that internal dialogue can bring about peace and stability in that country. I think it's only for the people of Syria to decide their fate. I think we all uh, would agree on the fate and on peace and stability. You mentioned foreign powers supporting uh, groups on the ground, and I'm, many would agree with you about rebels being supported by outside powers. But more than 400,000 people are dead in Syria, according to the UN. The vast majority of them killed by the Syrian government, not by quote-unquote terrorists. And that government has been armed funded and militarily supported by Tehran from day one? These are certain allegations. Uh, of course, I, I couldn't. The government of Iran does not agree with many of them. But the important thing but you do is that... But you do give money to Assad and you do give weapons to Assad. Terrorists are now intervening for several years now in the internal affairs of that country. And as I mentioned, it's for the people to decide their fate. It's for... Uh, the foreign powers to assist them to come to an internal dialogue for peace and for a democratic process that would ensure uh, a peaceful resolution of these conflicts. But, Madam Vice President, the world has looked on in horror at some of the images coming out of East Aleppo. People barrel-bombed, children hit with chlorine gas. Bashar al-Assad may laugh away those images and say all of those kids are terrorists, but surely you uh, are not going to say that today. Surely those images must bother you as a parent, as a human being, when you see those images of kids being bombed in East Aleppo. Those images, exactly, those images, I see those images and they bother me. I see those images in Yemen and what is happening in Yemen and there's a deafening silence in most mainstream media, including your media, about Yemen. Why, why do we have double standards? Uh, uh, similar issues are happening in parts of Palestine. I think we've covered, on this show, we've covered Yemen and Palestine. Right now we're talking about Syria and Iran's role in Syria. If you want to criticize Saudi Arabia's role in Yemen, why not criticize your own government's role in Syria? Barrel bombs are dropping on people in East Aleppo. You support, I've never heard an Iranian official cr criticize the use of barrel bombs in Aleppo. Will you do that today, Madam Vice President? As I mentioned, as I mentioned, we have to put double standards away. We all agree on double standards. Will you condemn the use of barrel bombs in East Aleppo against children, not against terrorists, against children? You said those images bother you. Will you condemn the causes of those images? The reality is that we have to condemn, we have to condemn such acts when they happen anywhere. But unfortunately, what is happening now in Syria is that the terrorists are being supported. They are creating violence. They are actually. Madam Vice President, the, the majority of people killed in Syria, by, according to every independent clear. group, have been killed by the Assad government, which Iran arms, funds, and supports. This is your analysis. That's the UN Other analysis. Independent groups don't believe in this analysis. They believe that the intervention of terrorist groups is a major issue. So I think that we have to go back to the basics. The basics is that the people of Syria have to decide for their future. Foreign intervention, foreign terrorists, they have to be left out of the picture. The Syrian people have to get together, negotiations and dialogue for peace and stability.
in their country and in their region. Uh, one final question on Syria before we move on. You've accused uh, many outside powers of arming quote-unquote terrorist groups uh, in Syria. Many Western governments would agree with you. Many analysts would agree with you. But Iran supports Houthi fighters in Yemen. Hezbollah in Lebanon and in Syria. It sends foreign fighters from across the world, from as far afield as Afghanistan, Shia fighters, into Syria to prop up a government that represents a minority Alawite population. Many would say that you're interfering in Syria, you're sending in quote-unquote terrorists, you're contributing to sectarianism in that country, as much as any other foreign power, these if not are, more so. Yeah, these are allegations. Does the, Iran not support Hezbollah? The, the Islamic Republic of Iran, the Islamic Republic of Iran does support, particularly the spiritual support. Iran is emerging as a power which is promoting peace and stability in this region. Not in Syria, where you're supporting groups on the ground who are committing, according to groups, war crimes, according to human rights groups. That may be, that may be, that may be your Not my version, Madam Vice President. Our Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, the United Nations. Our version, our version has been that we've, we've been trying and working with different groups to promote peace and stability in uh, Yemen, in Syria, in Palestine, in uh, our neighbors in Iraq and Afghanistan. We've been working against terrorist groups, but terrorist groups have been funded by different foreign powers, and unfortunately there's been very little said about where this funding is coming from, where is Daesh being supported, both politically, but also in terms of the funds, in terms of the arms, where are all those arms coming? It's a very good point you raise, and I've raised it with uh, governments from across the region. I've got you here today in front of me. Just before we move on, just to clarify on Syria, does Iran support Hezbollah, a foreign fighting force in Syria? Hezbollah is a foreign force on the ground in Syria. Does Iran as support I that force? As I mentioned, we support the expulsion of terrorists, of terrorist groups. Is Hezbollah we on the ground in Syria only supported by the Iran? Of Syria. Very simple, Madam Vice President. Yes or no? Only the people, only the people of Syria have the right to decide for their future and their destiny. Okay, uh, just closer to home. You're in charge of yes. the environment for the Iranian government. That's your portfolio. Like most other nations, Iran signed the Paris Agreement to tackle climate change last year. If the US under Donald Trump walks away from that agreement, does it automatically collapse or can the Paris climate deal survive uh, the US withdrawing from it? No, it shouldn't automatically collapse because uh, the countries are already uh, uh, implementing the Paris Agreement. They have uh, not only um, the entry into force of the uh, Paris Agreement has already happened. That means that more than 55% of the countries and 55% of the commitments have already been realized. So I think that this is a real deal and I think that the countries uh, in the world have committed themselves not only in talk and uh, in writing but also in action and we, we see a lot of new initiatives in uh, the Marrakesh talks. There were a lot of uh, new ideas coming up, coalitions, partnerships between countries, regional partnerships. I think that this is an important instrument for uh, regional cooperation and uh, uh, working um, on this issue can help to bring about regional coalitions and uh, in a region which uh, many of our uh, relationships are politicized I think that we need to work with not only our neighbors but with uh, um, all countries our, um, our Arab neighbors um, because we the environmental challenges that we face uh, these are issues that we need to work together. We need to get into partnerships. We live in one region and we have a common future. So I think that this is one area where we can put aside the differences and work together. Do you think countries in the Middle East, do you think the Muslim majority world uh, came late to the climate change debate? Did they not take it seriously enough at the beginning and now they're playing catch up? Do you think they've done enough? Yes, yes. I think that you're very right on that issue, and I think that uh, they came late. Uh, they, they didn't grasp the uh, uh, reality or the severity of 
uh, the issues coming. But now I think that they're more and more uh, realizing uh, how important it is, and they're integrating these uh, issues into their uh, national plans. And for that reason, I think that it's very important that we work together. I think that in Iran, we have a, uh, a very strong uh, uh, national body on this issue. We have a lot of capacity building in our different sectors. And I think that we're prepared to work with many, many of our neighbors in the region in terms of working for enhancing capacity and also working together partnerships. Both private sector and public sector initiatives are very important uh, in this area. And I think that we have to work together. And Iran is open to uh, working with its neighbors, with its regional uh, partners on this issue. Madam Vice President, thanks for joining me on Upfront. Thank you.